it's Nicole. I'm here doing a book review video for Celeste the Dark Queen by Samantha Uckland. A little disclaimer before I get started, I was sent a free e-copy of this book for a honest review. I want to say first, I'm sorry if I'm a little all over the place with this book review. I find I'm more nervous when filming book review videos just because if I'm not so scripted, I can't keep my thoughts on an even track. It's like I know how I feel about the book, but I can't really describe it in words. So I do script it a little bit, so if I sound robotic, I'm very sorry. And if it's kind of all over the place, if my thoughts are a little bit kind of out of whack, I apologize. When I'm talking and I just think of something, I have to say it right away or I'll forget about it. But I'm going to kind of keep this a little bit short and sweet. I don't want to give away too much because I don't want to spoil anything. I'm going to make this as spoiler free as possible and just give my overall thoughts of the book. By the time I upload this video, it will be the release day. The release day for this book is November 15th. So it should be available to buy either on e-reader or I believe physical copy as well. And I believe you can get it either off of um, Samantha Uckland's The Author's Website or you can get it off of Amazon. Either way, all of that information will be in the description below. I'm going to start off by giving a brief synopsis of the book. This is something information that I'm giving is just going to be on the back of the book, not too spoilery. If I look down, um, I have my little cheat sheet, my little notes down here. I just want to read the brief synopsis that you will find on the back of the book. Celeste... The wise and beautiful queen of Varys has been betrayed. On the night of her 26th birthday, the man who had loved her since their shared childhood poisoned her, stabbed her, and then left her for dead. Since then, the sun hasn't risen in their land. Since then, bloodthirsty, abhorrent beasts have roamed the earth and slain her innocent people. Kiev, her traitorous husband, is the son of her neighboring kingdom's vile queen. For years, the two kingdoms have been at war, until hers and his marriage. Celeste has never doubted the substance of his love until now. Even after his foul actions and apparent involvement with evil forces, she has trouble accepting that he deserted her for power. The fair queen finds herself caught in a battle between light and dark, the purest of good and the most dreadful of evil. As she battles for survival, she also fends to maintain her sanity in the terrifying and dark new world. Hope for her husband dwindles more with each passing day, but the faint spark of unexpected new love drives her to keep fighting for her kingdom. With her recent discovered magic and the aid of an ancient deity, she must attempt to rid her land of the terrifying abomination stalking its people. Can she do so before her former love destroys her new one? More importantly, can she rid the world of this suffocating darkness before the evil causes it overtakes her soul? That's what you're going to find on the back of the book. I'm just going to go over some brief positive points that I really enjoyed about this book. The first thing that I really enjoyed about this book is that every female character, whether it be Celeste, the good queen, or the vile queen from the neighboring kingdom, or other female characters in this book are very strong, very powerful, very ambitious. I just love seeing books with powerful female characters. They're not waiting around for the prince or the king to save them or save the day. They are the heroes in their own story. And there is a character other than Celeste that I just fell in love with. And she makes a great sacrifice for the good of her country, the good for her queen, for the kingdom. And that is just a very strong, powerful role model for girls in society today. Another point that I really enjoyed about this book is that every single character, whether they be on the side of good or evil, has tremendous character growth. No character really stays stagnant. In this book, each character really goes on a journey. Journey to self-discovery, journey to new love, 
journey to the great evil more power and it's wonderful reading about the character's journey in this book going along with that all the characters are really beautifully written even the so-called quote unquote evil ones they are doing the right thing in their own mind and they justify it and to them their thoughts and their actions make complete sense and the ends kind of justify the means this is obviously a fantasy book just the world building is quite amazing you get little snippets of things here and there and even in the front of the book you do get a sort of map of the world and that is very helpful when kind of navigating the terrain with Celeste and the other characters in this book and really as you're reading on you just want to know more and more about the world and kind of expanding on the character growth and development and well-written characters these characters are very relatable. You genuinely care about the characters and what is going to happen to them in their story. Not just Celeste, who is the main character, but other characters who are introduced as well. You kind of want them to achieve their goals, whether they be good or evil. If they're the good characters, you want them to overthrow the bad and you want them to persevere and get to their happy ending. And for the evil characters, you just it, there are those characters that you sort of love to hate because they are just so vile and manipulative and they were they are willing to do anything they have to to get what they want. Now I'm going to go over some of the negative points in the book as you're reading if you're going along. These points not might, might not bother you, but there's something that kind of stuck with me. I said in one of my positive points that the world building was really amazing and you wanted to learn more and more about the world that you find yourself in when reading about Celeste, the kingdom of Varys. Reading some of uh, the descriptive parts, it can get kind of confusing. I think the copy that I was reading didn't have the map with it, with the e-copy, and I believe with the hard copy you will get a map of the terrain and that definitely helps when trying to navigate along with Celeste as she's moving through the kingdom. And the copy that I was reading didn't have that, so not having the map to reference with. Some parts that are describing the terrain and the kingdom and the outskirts in the wilderness that Celeste finds herself in can be very confusing at some points. Another negative point that I found is that I would have really liked to have more of Celeste and Kiev's backstory from the synopsis you know that they have known each other for quite a long time. At the time of Celeste's betrayal, she's turning 26, it's her 26th birthday. Her and her king have been married for five years, but they have known each other since their childhood. But you don't really, you don't get any of that information. You start off right at the betrayal during her birthday party and you kind of go forward from there. You don't get any of the love she feels for her king during the five, five years of her marriage or during the childhood that led up to her marriage to Kiev. And I feel like you would have connected more to their relationship and rooted for the relationship more if you did know about that, if you did have that kind of backstory, which I know from speaking with the author that there will be more stories in this world. And I'm hoping that it's a prequel like either of Celeste's five years of marriage or their childhood leading up to it or you know it's just gonna be one big novel I would really really enjoy that kind of knowing where Celeste and Kiev came from and how they met how their love blossomed in such hatred because their two kingdoms were rival kingdoms and they hated each other and so the only peace that came from those kingdoms is through Celeste and Kiev's marriage. So I would have loved that history. Really, that's really the only um, negative aspects that I can think of of this book. I believe overall, I'm going to give it 4.5 out of 5 stars. There are things that I would really like to be included in the book that I'm missing out on that might be available in later books. 
but I would have liked them in this book. Hopefully I didn't give too much away. I kept this as spoiler free as possible. Like I said, by the time I upload this, it will be its release day. It is released on November 15th and I hope you really go and pick it up. I really enjoyed this book. It was very fun, fast paced. You're rooting for Celeste the entire time. You really care about her. You want her to succeed. You're sad when she's sad. You're happy when she's happy. And overall, I really enjoyed how the book ended. Without giving too much away, it ended the way I wanted it to end, even though it was pointing you in a certain direction. But um, this book is filled with just wonderful fantasy, magic, great characters, a poignant love story, integrity, the righteousness and self-sacrifice in this book is very apparent and awe-inspiring. I really enjoyed it. I really hope you pick it up, read it, and enjoy it too. All the links to the books and to the author's website will be in the description below. And I hope this video wasn't all over the place and you kind of get a gist of how I felt about the book. Don't forget to like my video if you did and comment below and subscribe to my channel if you're new. Welcome. Thank you so much for checking out my content. You can follow me on all the social media platforms. The links to those will be in the description below and I'll see you next time, Method Readers.